Hello, and welcome to the How to Exit podcast. Today, we're here with Adam Lyons. Adam Lyons is an acquisition entrepreneur extraordinaire. This guy is a CEO of multiple companies, advisor to multitudes of other entrepreneurs, and an absolute rock star. I'm honored to have you on the show today, man. I'm really excited to have you here today. Matt, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. It's going to be uh, going to be fun. <laughs> hey, let's just start off. How did you get into this space? Like, you know, you, you, uh, I was reading your profile a little bit. Uh, I kind of I kind of got the background, but let's share it with the audience. Like, I always joke around. It's like you know, you were born, you ended up on my show. Could you fill in the gap in between? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I mean, I was a janitor, and um, you know, that's pretty much how I got started in life. My dad was a janitor. His dad was the caretaker on a ship in the navy. So like that's kind of in England that you'd kind of do what your parents do unless you, you know, completely deviate. And uh, at 26 years old, I was sitting at the janitorial desk and I was reading about dating and I ended up becoming um, a, a dating coach. I ended up being actually one of the top dating coaches in the world. And um, I, I'm never going to forget the day that I uh, got awarded number one dating coach in the world at this event I went to in Hollywood. I couldn't pay my mortgage. And it's kind of shocking to be an expert at something and then realize you got no money. And meanwhile, there are all these guys that I knew were no good at dating that were making far more money than me because they were good at marketing. So um, I started learning marketing and following you know, the, the kind of people um, that, that learn from the kind of people that learn from the kind of people you probably want to learn from, you know, like the, the ones I could afford. And uh, I worked my way up and eventually I find myself um, being equal to people I'd hired to teach me. And um, they said, I can't help you anymore. You need to go to the guy I learned from. His name's Roland Frazier. And so I signed up for anything Roland was teaching, thinking that anything's better than nothing. And it ended up being a course on acquisitions that I had no idea what I was doing. I just wanted to learn from this guy. Well, actually, a lot of people don't realize that um, Frank Kern, who's regarded as one of the or original experts when it comes to internet marketing, um, Frank Kern um, launched a program called Mass Control, where the case yep. study was on yep. Neil Strauss's workshop. That's how I and found out about it. Yeah. Okay. Which is fascinating because I was involved in that original deal from the dating side of it, because the guy that, um, that put the deal together between Frank and Neil was the guy that voted me number one in the world. That was the first time I was, I was recognized while that was all going on. I was right there um, in the middle of it and not the first time because Evan Pagan, one of the, you know, again, yeah. original founding people of, uh, of internet marketing was David D'Angelo, which was double your dating. And um, I, I could go on and on about how many marketers got their roots in dating and then moved into traditional dating. Another one's Ty Lopez who started in dating. I, um, my, my core company uh, we own is the smart blueprint mm -hmm. and it's a blueprint that we developed for a company to identify um, the demand inside a company and whether we can create it after taking it over. So we'll often buy a company that isn't doing that great, knowing that because of the smart blueprint, we've already done a market fit analysis and know whether there is demand if it was repositioned and we'll go in, reposition a company and, and get all the profit. And the idea is the kind of person that buys a classic car is somebody who has already made money, is already successful and often later on in life we're not talking like 80 but you know 50 60 and it's kind of the age you start thinking about retirement making it an ideal position to go and acquire businesses you bond over a love of classic cars which gives you a a, a mutual rapport and hobby uh, which you know from dating from that point you identify what industry you're in you mentioned that you're acquiring businesses they mentioned they're thinking about selling and they're not sure what that looks like you're experienced you guide them through the process with no intention to buy it, just, hey, this is what it would look like if you were going to sell, how to go about it, how to get a good value, et cetera, et cetera. And at the end, they say to you, well, what would it take for you to buy it off me? And there you are. You just got your deal. So it's a, a wonderful, wonderful system. The new plumber's now got access to a business three times larger than them, but they don't know how to use it. You do the marketing, you fix customer service, bring in a receptionist, get it all growing, maybe find some other small plumbing companies, consider a roll up, you know, and put a training system in to train up that apprentice, et cetera, et cetera. Now you got yourself something that, you know, maybe in year one, it's just paying back the original owner and you're not really making much, but two, three, four, as you get growth, you got some real cash flow coming in. And after you stop paying out on the fifth year, um, or maybe you negotiate to close sooner, 
And before you know it, you've now got a ton of money. So that's a great plan. The question is, how do you meet the plumber? Well, one easy way to do it is to just find uh, your trade shows, right? There'll be, there'll be a plumbing convention. Uh, there'll be an electrician's convention. And no one really wants to go to them. They're usually in like a little Sheraton hotel or something like that. So no one ever really wants to go. But you go along and they'll all be there. And they're not the exhibitors. They're the patrons. They're the ones walking around. Let's, let's make sure people know how to get a hold of you. What are you interested in? Why would somebody contact you if they've got something? What are you looking for in this world, man? Yeah, I mean, at this point, um, I, I'm kind of a big fan of like, you know, um, help others and then, you know, reciprocity kicks in and, and kind of like kicks back. Um, I actually wrote an entire huge blog post that breaks down like a lot of our methodology of once we acquire a business, how we grow it. If someone's listening to this and, you know, they want to grow their business or like make more money, um, it's free. You don't, you don't even have to opt in. You can just like go to it. Um, if you're cool with it, I'll give my personal cell phone. You can text me. And uh, I've got a mini automation when somebody texts me. It is me. It's not like some kind of weird short code number, but I put an automation on for the legality of data collection. Um, so that's a pretty cool thing. But uh, my phone number is 512-957-3141. It's the Austin area code, uh, yep. 512-957-3141. And uh, you just send me a text message. Just say hi. You know, Maybe let me know a little bit about yourself. You know, if you actually just say hi, I won't know who you are. Um, and then um, you'll go through the mini automation and uh, just request the, the link. And I'm more than happy to send you this breakdown. Um, it's how we do time management in a new company, how we hire, fire, um, how we uh, work out whether the offer's there. Uh, and I'm, I'm more than happy to give that to people. I find in podcasts, um, it's a bit easier to have like a real personal connection.